Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we're just going to be installing AdGuard on a single board computer in the, and in this case I'm going to be installing on my Zimmer board. Uh, you can use any sort of computer, a Raspberry Pi, a laptop, whatever you have um, and we're going to be installing it using Docker. Now if you're not familiar with what AdGuard is, uh, it's kind of like Pi-hole and if you're not familiar with what Pi-hole is, it's just a um, an ad blocking and tracker blocking um, solution you can set up uh, in your home network and then any devices in your home network will then utilize AdGuard uh, and it will block trackers and you know ads uh, that you get when you're just browsing the internet. Now I don't know how great it is with YouTube. YouTube's pretty good at blocking, uh, sorry getting past um, home ad blockers so you might not notice um, any YouTube ads being blocked but generally most other ads around the internet should be getting blocked so yeah and it also gives you a great dashboard to be able to track your home network and what's been blocked what's been allowed and stuff like that as well so we'll have a look at that as we play around right so this is the AdGuard home web page uh, here it's not there's not a lot of details here for us um, in terms of it's just talking about you know what it can do um, and whatnot and there's a whole bunch of ways that you can set it up um, in this case again we're going to be using docker but you can just natively download it um, on your windows mac or whatever um, in this case uh, if we go to the docker page this is pretty much going to be our main place where we grab the commands and stuff that we want and all the information we need uh, let me zoom in a little bit for you so as you can see here uh the first things we want to check when we come to a docker page is one make sure it's the legit docker container if we can see it's made by agard great it was updated two days ago so we know it's still getting uh, maintained which is um, something really important we want to make sure we're using a well-maintained docker image and there's no vulnerabilities or whatnot and we can see that there's a hundred million plus pulls, uh, which means someone's pulled that container to their local device a hundred million times. Well, people have, not one individual person. <laughs> that would be worrying. Clip here of just a high level view of the dashboard and what you can see. So you can get your top clients, who's using what, um, the top block domains and all of that stuff. So you can get into all of that, which is great. So, and we'll have a good look into that as well. So this page is really gonna be critical for us to understand how to use this container. Um, so we can see here, we get an uh, example code here of what we can use and we can utilize this a lot. Um, and we can see here that it's using a lot of ports and it's giving us kind of an explanation on what's happening with these ports. So you can just copy and paste this if you wanted to, but in my case, I have a lot of these ports already in use from other things. Um, so like these ports here won't really work for me and I don't intend to use it as a DHCP service. So, um, you know, don't just chuck this in if you don't need it. Uh, but if you want a DHC server, then you'll need these ports. And again, with some other stuff. So um, what I've actually decided to do is I have a book stack and a book stack is pretty much a, I've made a video on it. If you're interested, I have a link somewhere. And it's just a little place where I can have um, nice, books essentially um, documentation on everything I'm doing so I'm going to start making sure that every video I create that any code I actually use or any commands I run I will have a page dedicated to that video and in this page you'll be able to find the command and I will add some notes and stuff on um, what was used and why I used it and stuff like that as well so this is the command we're going to be using so it's a little different from that example uh, one because I've ripped out the DHCP ports because again I don't need those so key things here are the volumes make sure you update these volumes um, if you come to this page uh, this book stack I'll have again it's going to be public so you can access it there'll be a link in the description I'll add some notes around some of the stuff you need to change but again make sure your volumes are set up with the correct path of where these your files for these containers will be stored locally on your device and the ports you want to use. So again, there'll be some ports that if you want them at a DHCP server, um, I'll add some information around that if you want to add those ports uh, just from um, this page here. You can always just come to this page as well, but yeah, it's just making a single source of truth spot. Anyway, enough talking. I should essentially be able to copy this, jump to my server, paste it in, and we should have AdGuard running on port 3000. So let's jump over to our server. Right, yeah. So we are on the Zimmer board, which is, I've called it Alzim. That's the name of the server. Uh, if we do an LS, we can't see anything, which is great. Uh, print in the working directory, we see that that 
directory matches where I said we want to store our configuration files when it creates everything. So what we can do is run sudo. I have to put sudo because I haven't added my user to the Docker group. Should really get around to doing that, but one day. <laughs> um, and then I just paste in the command. Now you need to have Docker installed, of course, to be able to run this um, and we'll install it. So again, you can see this matches this directory up here and it's going to create work directory and conf directory folders uh, because I don't have them created, but that's okay because Docker will do it for me. And I can essentially hit enter and it will pull down that image and create our container. Now we can see that um, it actually failed because port 53 is already in use. Uh, so what I've actually done is if I go back to the sudo and paste my command in like this, you can see that I've actually added the specific IP address. Let me just get rid of that um, here of that. I'm saying, hey, this is the IP address 53, map it to that rather than uh, the broadcast address of 0.0, .0 which is trying to do by default. So by adding the IP address like this, it should get past that error. Uh, again, I'll have this in the documentation as well for you uh, if you hit the same error. I'll hit enter now and I have to remove the old container, of course. Let me quickly do that. Right, third time's a charm. Now let's hit it and run. There we go. Now we should have AirGuard up and running. Um, so now if I do sudo docker container ls hyphen a, list all our containers, uh, we can see we have AirGuard up and running now. So it's on port uh, 3000. So was it 3000? I believe it was 3000. Um, let's hit that IP address and see what we get. And there we go. We now have AdGuard up and running. Uh, so what we can do now is we can go through the install. So if we hit get started. So I'm just going to leave everything as pretty much default here. So the admin web interface, all interfaces. Uh, it's saying here that we'll be able to hit it on the following addresses. Now it's saying the local IP addresses, but we know that this is actually going, we need to resolve it. Uh, we're going to resolve it over its actual um, IP address uh, of the actual server itself. So um, this won't be what you put in. These are just the local IP addresses. So uh, we can hit next now. And we can create a username. So hit next. And now it's telling you how you can get it all set up. So uh, in the router, again, you wouldn't put this IP address. You'd put the IP address of the server. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll go into the router and I'm going to say, hey, look, this is the IP address that everything's going to use. So we can hit next and it's all set up. So we can log in now, right? And once we've logged in, we can see that there's no clients or nothing's being tracked and which is fine because nothing's told to use it yet. So we'll go to my router and I'm going to get this set up properly. So I don't know, I was going to show you in my server, but my server, uh, sorry, I was going to show you in my router um, how to set this up. Uh, but you need to change your DNS. That's all you need to do. Um, mine's all managed via a phone app um, or my Wi-Fi and everything for my house. So um, I've just gone in there and I've changed the DNS. And now you can see that it's slowly going to roll that change out to the devices on my home network. As you can see here, as we refresh, things will be picked up. And then they will start utilizing AdGuard as the DNS server. And you can see now what's been queried. So um, you can see that, you know, this here, the NTP is the Ubuntu server. So that's what the Zoom board's using. Um, and that's already coming through. So we can start seeing already uh, all of this stuff is being picked up. So let's go and I don't know if my Mac is on here as a, um, as a device. All right, so 104 is my IP address. So it looks like I haven't picked up yet um, for me to actually start testing that. But anyway, we can kind of see now Things are starting to flow through, which is awesome. And now we can actually start getting a look at what's happening. So we can go into like a client and we can see what it's doing and what's being blocked. So we can see that already like double click. Um, these, these are like big ad um, providers. We can see that ad guards are already blocking these. And if we wanted to, if we notice that things are being blocked where we don't want them to be blocked because we need it for whatever reason, uh, you can just unblock them here. That's no problem. Um, and you can also add things to a block list. If I didn't want this to get through, whatever like this AD Google syndication is, I can block it if I wanted to. Um, we can come here and we can look at the DNS block list. So by default, AdGuard have a block list that we can use and there's 52,476 rules by default. So we're using that one. Um, and you can check for updates regularly to make sure they're all updated. 
and you can also add a block list of your own if you wanted one. Uh, again, with an allow list, if there were specific ones you wanted to allow, you can add them here. And then uh, block services. So let's just say for whatever reason there was a service in here you didn't want someone to be able to use. Maybe you wanted to lock some things down on your network or yeah, kids or whatever. You can come through here and lock all of the stuff down. Um, so yeah, this is where you can manage your home network all through here. And then if you wanted some custom filtering rules, you can add them here as well if you want to get a bit ticky. Now you've got the general settings here. Um, there's not a whole lot here. It's just generally how long logs and stuff are all kept. Um, you've got your DNS settings here. So if there's any changes that you would like to make here, you can make them as you please. Some encryption settings. We can see here the uh, if we were using a DHCP server, this is where we would do it. But remember, I'm not using those ports, so I won't be using this setting. But it's here if you want to use it. And now let's just give a bit of a refresh on this board. And we can see already that three have already been blocked on my home network. And we only have uh, three clients that have been rolled in. I have uh, probably 15 devices on my network. Uh, so these will start rolling through once um, the DNS refresh is kicked in. So... That is pretty much AgGuard and how we can set it up. So I hope that kind of explained it to you how you can go and grab the Docker command, spin up your AgGuard, and just how easy it is to um, go into your router. Now, I, I wish I could show you the actual router config, but again, it's all just managed through my um, my phone app. So you can, you can just go to your IP address of your router and go and look for your LAN settings and then just change the IP address uh, for your DNS server. And then it should just slowly roll down over time. Um, you can also force your devices to use it as well. Remember in AngGuard, it showed you how you can go based on your device and add the DNS server manually if you want as well. But um, again, we're gonna have the book stack link in the description with the commands that I used in this video, and I'll add some notes around why um, and what we've done uh, to get that command working. Um, and then, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.